Ever notice how woodworking gets a lot harder when you can't see what you're doing? Yeah, me too. Tonight, I'm gonna to go in depth and break down everything you need to know about shop lighting and how to stop your shop from looking like a dungeon. But first of all, let me bring you up to date on where we are in the shop build. I finally decided it was time to put up some drywall on at least one side of the new wall. Now I know some of you are gonna ask why I didn't use plywood or OSB on the wall. And oddly enough, I actually really like the look of clean white drywall. And I wanted to keep the shop consistent all the way around since there was drywall on three other walls in the shop. The process of measuring, cutting, and hanging the drywall was a lot more fun than I thought because with each new piece, I could see the progress and I could see the shop taking shape. As a side note, the only bad side about having a bunch of outlets is that now you have to cut out a whole bunch of holes on the drywall to make everything fit in place. I also had a little helper in my shop that made things a lot more fun. With the drywall installed, this place started to feel like a real shop and I couldn't wait to get started on some real lighting. When I ran the wiring in here, I planned on having two lighting switches to control all of the overhead lights. So I ran those wires up for my switch and just left some longer lengths of that wire in the attic. For this shop, I'm using lights from a company called Hyper light because they have a great selection of a variety of different shop lights. And sometimes I just need options. The hardest part for me though was to figure out where exactly I wanted to put all the lights. So I did a ton of research and went down a bunch of rabbit holes to try to figure out what would work best for my shop. Now the things that were most important to me were number one, no harsh shadows or any shadows if possible, but especially at my workbench. Number two, I needed things bright because I work out here and I film at night. So I need to have good lighting across the whole thing, but I don't want it to be unnatural or painful to look at. Number three, I wanted the ability to have different light switches to be able to control different levels of lighting. Number four, I wanted to have the lights hardwired into the ceiling, not hanging down, because I wanted the ceiling to still be bright. Number five, I wasn't sure on the lighting color that I wanted exactly, so I wanted the ability to switch between different colors. With this criteria in mind, I started researching and again going down rabbit holes to try to figure out what would be the best and the perfect options for me. But one of the rabbit holes I went down was all of the numbers that you need to know when you're doing lighting. So in order to save you the time, I'm gonna break it down right here, everything you need to know about lighting numbers. Let's start with watts, because this is the one that most people already know. Watts measures how much electricity a light uses, not the brightness. Back in the old days, watts and brightness were pretty closely linked. So a 60 watt light bulb was not as bright as a 100 watt light bulb. But now with LEDs, watts don't tell you brightness anymore. It's just how much electricity the light is eating. Here's the difference. A 60 watt old school incandescent light bulb made about 800 lumens. Today, a modern LED light bulb also makes 800 lumens, but only uses about eight to 10 watts. Now make sure to not confuse watts with lumens. Lumens are basically brightness or how much light comes out of the bulb. So higher lumens means more light. A single candle is only 15 lumens. A standard light bulb is 800 lumens. And a typical shop light that's LED would be five to 10,000 lumens. Next up is foot candles. If lumens measures how much light is coming out of the light bulb, then foot candles is measuring how much light actually lands on your work. One foot candle is equal to one lumen per square foot. So in more practical terms, that means that a 10,000 lumen light fixture is gonna put out the same amount of light no matter where you install it. Whether it's in an eight foot tall small bedroom closet or if it's on a 22 foot pole in a parking lot, the light fixture is the same. However, the foot candles, or how much light actually hits the surface, is going to be much higher in the closet than it is in the parking lot. In a typical bedroom, you would probably need only about 10 foot candles. A kitchen would usually be around 30 to 40, and a workshop should be probably 80 to 100 at least. Now, in order to get some real life measurements in my house and around my shop, I got a light meter off Amazon that wasn't too expensive, and I took some measurements. Walking around my house in the afternoon on a cloudy day, I measured lighting in the kitchen, dining room, and family room. I got readings mostly below 20 foot candles with the lighting under the stove being the rare exception going up to about 60. The current state in the garage was about 25 foot candles if I was standing directly underneath the light, but at the workbench, I was only getting 15. Dang, I guess I live in a cave. Just for fun, I also took some measurements outside and it was a partly cloudy day but I was still getting 400 to 500 foot candles wherever I went. Like I said before, my shop needs to be bright, so I wanted a minimum of 100 foot candles wherever I went in the shop. Now you don't know where the foot candles are actually gonna be in your shop until you install the lights, because there's so many different factors. If you have something on the wall, if they're painted white, 
if you have something creating a shadow, all those will affect your foot candles. What most companies will do to give you a lighting layout is they'll take the overall dimensions of your shop, length, width, and height, and then they'll make some assumptions about your environment, like white walls or workbench height, take all of that and then give you a recommendation of what light fixtures would meet the lighting requirements for that space. So if you're trying to estimate lighting for a living room, they might say 20 foot candles is great, but for a shop, they're gonna say probably between 80 and 100 foot candles. Hyperlight does this as a free service. So I send them the dimensions of my space and they put it all into their software and gave me a full lighting analysis. This was really helpful as a starting point, but I had some other things I wanted to add based on what I was gonna use the space for. More on that a bit later. Now let's talk CRI or color rendering index. This is just how good a light is at showing colors accurately. The scale goes from zero to 100. 100 is perfect sunlight where you can see all the colors nice and clear. 60 to 70 CRI makes the colors look a little bit weird. Lower CRI is fine if you're just putting Christmas decorations away, but it's not good if you're trying to put finish on a project. Typically a CRI of 80 is adequate for shop lighting and great for most applications. But if you're gonna do a lot of product photography or maybe color matching, then I would aim for at least 90 and above. Fortunately, most of the shop lights that you see sold today are all at least 80 CRI. Now let's talk color temperature. This is measured in kelvins and this is where people usually mess up. A 2700 kelvin light is cozy and warm. It's great for living rooms, but it's gonna make your shop look like a candlelight dinner. 4000 kelvins is kind of a neutral white color and 5000 kelvins is bright daylight. I'd recommend something in the 4000 to 5000 kelvin range. That way you're not straining your eyes, but your shop still looks bright and clean. If you go too high, like 6500 kelvin, then it starts to feel like a gas station bathroom, which is probably not the vibe you're going for. So now that you're fully educated on lighting, let's talk about layout. For a large shop with 12 foot high or higher ceilings, you should plan on doing ambient lighting to light the entire space and then have specific task lighting in the areas you're working on. For a smaller shop like mine though, that has eight or 10 foot ceilings, you can probably just get away with ambient lighting being bright enough to not require additional task lighting. That was my goal with my layout. I guess I can always add more later as needed, but my goal was to make everything equally bright. Another important consideration for your shop is you really don't want shadows. Now shadows can be caused by a number of things, but the main things that cause it in a shop space are when you have the light behind you, and so it casts a shadow of yourself on it. In order to test this, I took some lights from my old shop and I taped them onto the ceiling so I could see which ones would cast shadows on me at the workbench. I could then position my new lights in those locations. Another cause can be having lights that are too bright or one that's significantly brighter than another light. In my last shop, I had this problem with one of the main garage lights behind me. So if you can position your lights directly above your workspace and then have a lot of the same type of lights, that will help you get a lot more consistent lighting with less shadows in your shop. Now, in terms of the lights being too bright, there's a lot of cheap lights out there that you can find online that will have a clear cover and you're looking directly at the LED diodes. This is gonna be painful in your eyes. You're not gonna to wanna to spend very much time looking at this. Try to choose fixtures that have some sort of lens or diffuser on it to reduce the brightness. That'll not only reduce the shadows, but it'll also help you not burn your retinas every time you look up. So with all this info now, let me tell you what I decided on and why. I looked at high bay lights, round shop lights, can lights, linear strip lights, panel lights, and hexagon lights. And I finally decided on the Hyperlite eight foot long linear strip lights because this meets most of my requirements. It has 10,000 lumens. You can adjust the color between 3000 and 5000 K. And it actually has the ability to adjust the wattage, which reduces the brightness on it. It also can be ceiling mounted, and most importantly, it has a diffuser lens on it so it doesn't hurt your eyes when you look at it. The lighting analysis that I had done recommended four of these lights, which would give me 40,000 lumens. Problem is the location of them would have made the light behind me when I'm standing at my workbench. So based on my desire to have things really bright and not have shadows, I decided to go with four lights around the perimeter, 24 inches off the wall, and then three lights down the center on two different switches. This gives me lighting directly above my workbench as well as overall lighting. It comes from a lot of different angles to help reduce the shadows. This also gives me a total light brightness of 70,000 lumens. Now I can reduce that if I want to by turning off one of the switches down to 30,000 lumens. I also set the color temperature to 4,000 Kelvin because I like how it feels on my eyes when I'm looking around, but I can always change it later to 5,000 lumens if I wanna make it brighter. 
The install of these lights was a bit challenging, but mainly because they're eight foot long lights and I'm one person. That means the ladder had to move around a lot and I needed much longer arms. The length of these also made it harder to measure the ceiling box locations. So I actually mislocated three of the box holes and had to patch them and cut new holes. Another complexity is that I had to notch out the garage door brackets on the ceiling in order to mount the lights flush. Once I had all the lights hooked up and working, then came the moment of truth when I turned the lights on and after working for months with a single fluorescent above me, I now had 70,000 lumens of light. <laughs> Glorious light. Oh my goodness. As I walk around now with my light meter, I'm getting readings between 150 and 220 foot candles on my work surfaces. This is amazing and is actually not too bright. If it does end up being too bright, I can always reduce the wattage on the lights or I can just use one of the switches. This is starting to make my shop feel like a real functioning shop and I can't wait to get the rest of it wrapped up. Let me know in the comments what lights you have in your shop and if you like them or if they're kind of dungeon lights. Make sure to subscribe to see what happens next in here. Now, go build something and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.